It all comes down to this. Oilers and Panthers, who am I picking to win it all? And also, how can the Devils learn from another playoff team that got eliminated? I might get some slack for this. And what's the team I'm talking about? We have a lot to break down in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked on Devils with Trey Matthews. Elias scores! Oh, Steven stepped up, nailed him. Rodor has got the puck. What a shot. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked on Devils podcast here on Locked on Network. I'm your host, college hockey club, a play announcer, Devils driver of Pucks and Pitchforks, and also part-time credential MIA member, Trey Matthews. The stage? has been set. The Edmonton Oilers will take on the Florida Panthers in the 2024 Stanley Cup Final. Connor McDavid, one of the best players to ever graze the sheet of ice, will compete for the Cup for the first time in his career and participating in back-to-back Stanley Cup Final. It's Matthew Kachuk, the cousin of Tom Fitzgerald. And in today's episode, I'm going to do something that I don't think I've ever done in my history of being a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm going to give you guys my thoughts, and I'm going to pick a winner, but it will circle back to the Devils in some way, shape, or form. But in the first segment, I want to talk a little bit more about Silly Season and the truth behind it. Then the second segment, while we're still talking about the playoffs, Let's talk about the New York Rangers, and I'm going to play devil's advocate. I know a lot of people are clowning on the Rangers, and people have all sorts of jokes, and trust me, I'm no exception. I've also partaken in the fun a little bit on social media, but I think the Devils can learn a thing or two from the Rangers, particularly with their goaltending situation. What do I mean by that? Well, you'll just have to wait and see, but to kick off today's episode, let me tell you guys the truth about Silly Season. My previous episode sparked some controversy on social media because people were saying, oh, Trey wants to bring back Adam Henrique, Tomas Tatar, and Stefan Nason instead of looking for new options, all three of them back on the Devils roster. Let me clear the air on that a little bit. First and foremost, Silly Season, whether you like the term or not, I'm going to continue to use it because I've been using it the past few years on this show. But the disclaimer I always give before the start of the offseason is that Silly Season is not meant to be taken seriously, hence the name Silly Season. They're just hypothetical trade or free agency scenarios put out there to have a discussion and have a debate. And I think I accomplished that in my previous episode. But the thing is, is like usually when I do a Silly Season discussion, I do it case by case, as in I pick a certain player and I make that the focal point of the episode. But in this particular instance, I chose three different cases and combined it into one episode. And I can understand how that could be a little confusing. Momentarily, I'll give you guys my thoughts on that episode and which former player I would lean towards. But once again, it's most likely not going to happen. It's just meant for fun and games. And FYI, I'm not the only Devils content creator to put hypothetical scenarios out there that most likely won't happen. It's the off season. Don't take it so seriously. Enjoy it. And who knows? Maybe it could come into fruition. I've done silly season episodes in the past that uh, have no merits. But at the same time, there have been a few circumstances that have come into fruition. Timo Meyer, Vitek Vanacek, just a few examples. And some are more serious than others. And some of you are probably wondering, why was I so quick to basically disregard the Brady Kachuk trade rumors? Because Brady Kachuk, he is one hell of a player. He brings a lot of physicality, and he's also a bona fide scorer. I would love to have Brady Kachuk on the roster, but it's not realistic for the time right now. You're going to have to wait like a year or two before something like that was to come into fruition because similar to what I've said in previous episodes, 
if the Devils were to call up the front office for the Senators right now, you would be at the Senators' mercy. And that doesn't just apply for the Devils. That applies for any other team because Kachuk is not eligible for an extension for another three years. And the reason why I was so quick to basically disregard that rumor is because I felt as though people were taking it a little too far, whether it was on NHL Network or spitting chiclets. I'm just like, it's not going to happen. And have you noticed that there aren't that many Devils content creators tackling this scenario it's just because they know that there's really no smoke to it and i even brought a credentialed nhl media member from ottawa on this show to discuss the circumstance and what's happening in ottawa but once again it's just all fun and games and it's the off season enjoy it everybody's zero and zero on the off season and i do think the devils will make a decent sized move but their main priority should be goaltending and also getting some grittier defensemen. But at the same time, I talked about it in my previous episode in which I said that the Devils, they're going to need some more depth in terms of forwards. Why is that? Well, since Michael McLeod is not returning to the team, there goes the Devils' best face-off uh, person. There goes uh, a decent two-way player. They're going to have to replace that somehow, some way. And that's why I did that previous episode. There are some uh, free agent options that the Devils could look at. And some of those free agent options are former players. Why not just entertain it a little bit? But I don't think it's going to happen. Let me just make that perfectly clear. And there's no way in hell that the Devils would sign all three players at once. Let's be, I, I, I am not delusional. I just want to put that out there. But I will say this. Out of all those three players I discussed, Adam Henrique, Tomas Tatar, Stefan Nason, if I had to choose one of those players for the Devils to reunite, I would choose Stefan Nason just because Nason is a pretty good player. He's not a threat to score, but he's capable of doing so, and we saw that in the playoffs. He appeared in 11 playoff games for the Hurricanes just a few weeks ago, and he put up four goals. I think he was a spark plug for the Hurricanes roster, and he's not afraid to throw his body around. And that's something that a lot of people have been complaining, which is the Devils, in the words of Jersey Joe, they don't have enough Sasquatches out there, and they just need someone who's a bit more aggressive. And they lost that in Michael McLeod. They lost that in Miles Wood. And Curtis McDermott, he's going to add a lot to the locker room and sometimes on the rink. If the Devils are good once again, He's not going to see the sheet of ice all that consistently. And I think Nason can definitely be aggressive, but at the same time, he can play in most of the games and be efficient. If I had to choose just one player from that episode to reunite with, it would be Nason. But that's just an option of many others. That's just one of who knows who's going to hit the market. So I'm just putting that out there, which is don't take it so seriously. And I enjoy doing it, but at the same time, the Devils do have some other priorities to focus on. One of those priorities is goaltending, and we're going to talk about that momentarily. But before we continue, I want to tell you guys about eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. Okay, 1994. What do I mean by that? That's the last time in which the New York Rangers hoisted the Stanley Cup. And I think we all know uh, the infamous battle that led up to it. But luckily, the Devils redeemed themselves the very next year and captured their first Stanley Cup in franchise history and then two more after that in 2000 and also 2003 but 
digressing a little bit. This is not a Rangers Devils debate. I know a lot of people are enjoying the Rangers being knocked out in the conference finals by the Florida Panthers. I think the mindset, the whole playoff series was A B R, anyone but Rangers. But I'm going to play devil's advocate, similar to what I said in segment one. Let's look at Igor Shesterkin's stats during the playoffs. He appeared in 16 games. He had a win-loss record of 10-6. and six. He had a save percentage of 926. He saw 524 save attempts, and he made 485 saves, and he had a goals against average of 2.34. Talk about carrying the team on your back. If I had to give my unbiased opinion, Igor Shesterkin would have been my personal MVP if the Rangers made it to the Stanley Cup final because he was keeping New York in a lot of those matchups against the Panthers. That series loss is not on Igor. And it does put a lot of things into perspective. What's one of the biggest talking points during the course of the season, and also this offseason. The Devils need a goalie in order to see greater success. And I think there's some truth to that, but it's not the only thing that they need to focus on. What do I mean by that? Well, back in January, Chico Resch appeared on this show, and he and I were talking about where do the Devils go from here because we were talking about Lindy Ruff potentially getting fired, we were talking about the Devils trying to get a big-name goalie by the trade deadline. We were talking about their inconsistent defense. Here's what Chico had to say about the Devils' goaltending situation. And he also brought up some big-name players. Check it out. Do you put the blame on Vanacek, Schmid, and, and Dawes for the Devils' struggles this year? Or where, where do you like blame the defense and where do you blame the goalie? Well, that's well uh, said, Trey. Okay, l let's be honest. I'm not saying Vanacek or Daw, they've been brilliant, lights out. But let's just go back again. Last year's playoffs, you like Hellebuck? Oh, Winnipeg, they go out in the first round. You like Shesterkin? Oh, they went out in the first round. You like Vasilevsky? Oh, I really like, they went out in the first round. You like the two Boston goalies who won the Vesna? Oh, they went out in the first round. My point is... The goalies for the Devils haven't been lights out. But I think in sports, but maybe in all of our lives, we want a real simple solution. Either fire the coach, because if we just if we just fire the coach and bring a new coach, we're going to win. Well, no, it's not. It doesn't work that way. I mean, oh, well, as much I, as from well, the outside. I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but people are going to bring the example, the, the Edmonton Oilers. They made a coaching change, and currently they're on a 16-game win streak. Yes, but do they have two of the best players in all of hockey? That too. Yeah. yeah that, that and too. then they've got I, 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 Just to be clear, I'm not saying like the devil should make a, 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 a coaching change. No. I've defended Lindy Ruff on my show. I'm just saying like that's what people uh, turn yes. to quickly. Exactly, Trey. No, and, and you're right. Were, were the Oilers frustrated, disappointed? It's just like we're talking about the Devils. The Oilers had defensemen that weren't playing – as best they could. And maybe those forward, those forward guys, you know, like if you look at uh, Connor McDavid, the goals this year and how many he scored last year, he's going to score less, but he's playing more team game. Okay. Obviously there's a lot more to what Chico said, but some of the names he listed was Connor Hellebuck. Hellebuck won the Vesna trophy in 2020. And he's one of three finalists for the, Vesna this season, Andre Vasilevsky, two-time Stanley Cup champion, won the Vesna in 2019, and Igor Shesterkin, someone who I just spoke about, he won the Vesna trophy in 2022. Basically, what I think Chico was trying to articulate is like, if you look at all of those big name goalies, former Vesna trophy winners, former champions, guys who had big impacts on their team, the Jets, the Lightning, and the Rangers were all bounced out in the first round last season. And who went on to win the Stanley Cup? It was the Vegas Golden Knights, and who was their starting goalie? It was Aiden Hill. 
And to Hill's credit, he is a good goalie. And looking at some of his prior teams, the Arizona Coyotes, the San Jose Sharks, and obviously now with the Golden Knights, he would he always put up respectable numbers and there was nothing ever that alarming about him. I think the only season in which he didn't really perform all that well was during the 2017-2018 campaign when he was with the Coyotes when he appeared in four games and he had a record of 1 and 3, he had a goals against average of 3.49 and a save percentage of 891. I'm sure there's more narrative and truth behind it, but his final few years with the Coyotes and his one season with the San Jose Sharks and then with the Golden Knights, his numbers have been anywhere from good to respectable. Like there's nothing really to write home in terms of him having a bad season, if, if that makes sense. But if you were to look at some of his accolades, the only thing that is there at the NHL level is the Stanley Cup in 2023 with the Golden Knights. Prior to that, he didn't have any accolades, no Vesna, no all-star game appearances, nothing. He, he, it was, it was just, he was a good goalie, but nothing spectacular. The point that Chico was trying to make is like, you don't need a big name goalie like Connor Hellebuck or Andre Vasilevsky or Igor Shesterkin to solidify you a Stanley cup. But the thing is, is like the devils, they still do need to work on their goaltending situation. I'll just humor you. If the devils were to hypothetically get Connor Hellebuck last year during the off season and not get Tyler to Foley. Let's just pretend like this is some alternate universe. It doesn't guarantee that the devils will win a Stanley cup. Will they be better? Will they be a playoff team? I believe so. But just because you have a big name goalie in net, it doesn't mean a thing unless you have a collective team effort. There's more to winning. There's more to being a championship contender than just getting a good goalie. And I think the Devils, I, I think Tom Fitzgerald will upgrade the goalie position because the Devils do need an upgrade. But just because they do get an upgrade, it does not guarantee a thing. Similar to what I said about the Sheldon Keefe hiring. I love Sheldon Keefe. I think he's going to do a phenomenal job behind the bench for New Jersey. But make no mistake, the job is not finished. And in the words of the late, great Kobe Bryant, the playoffs are a different animal. And can you be a different animal but the same beast? That's the thing that the Devils need to really focus on. Okay, you're a good regular season team, but can you beat the same team four times out of seven? That's what it's going to come down to in the playoffs because it's a little bit different. It's no longer just playing this game and then moving on to the next game. You're not just going to play the Islanders and then, a couple days later, you're going to play that team in Utah or you're going to go up to Canada and play the Oilers. No, 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 no. It's like you're going to play the Rangers or Hurricanes, who, whomever in the playoffs, and you got to beat them four times out of seven. And that's going to be a bit of a challenge because teams can make adjustments. Teams can find a weakness. They're going to meticulously find film to see like, OK, do you come on your assignment too early? Where can they exploit you? How can they find those gaps? How can they find those weaknesses? That's the difference between a Stanley Cup team and a playoff team. I think the Devils will get to the Stanley Cup at some point, but they still have a lot of work to do. Similar to what Tom Fitzgerald told me, you got to take just baby steps. The first step, get a new head coach. They did that. They got a good head coach, in my opinion. Now, step two. Once the entire NHL season concludes, as in the Stanley Cup final, then we'll we'll see like what Tom Fitzgerald does next. Could he try to target a goalie? What's he going to do with that 10th overall pick? Is he going to keep it? Is he going to try to use it in a trade package? That also comes into factor. And now how do you fill out the rest? You need to figure out how to replace Damon Severson and Ryan Grace uh, productivity because I think they were underrated assets on the Devils' blue line because, unfortunately, as talented as Nemetz and Hughes are, they're very inexperienced. And if you have an inexperienced blue line, it's not going to be a recipe for success come the playoff time. And then when it comes to forwards, you need to find a way to replace Michael McLeod and also Miles Wood. You, you get what I'm saying? It's a collective team effort. But getting a, a good goalie is definitely a priority. 
but it's not just going to be an easy fix. There, there has to be a lot of other things that the Devils need to do if they want to see success. And I think that's what Chico was getting at. Let me give you another example. Andre Vasilevsky, he has two Stanley Cups under his belt, and he won the Vesna in 2019. But keep in mind, that Lightning team, they were stacked to the brim. You got Nikita Kucherov, who just put up 144 points just this past season, and he has a legitimate chance of winning the heart. He's already won it. He won it in 2019. Or you got Victor Hedman. He won the Norris in 2018. Braden Point, Steven Stamkos, also very good players. That entire Lightning team for their respective mini dynasty was really good, and there's a reason why they went to -to -to back-to-back-to-back Stanley Cup final and won two of them because they had a great collection of players. You had one player who could win the heart. You had one player who can win the Norris. Okay. So your defense and your offense is settled. Then you got other pieces that can play a factor like point, like Stamkos and having a strong goalie in that named Vasilevsky. If you don't have the correct pieces, there's only so much that a good goalie can do. Case in point with Shesterkin and the Rangers during the playoffs. Or if you want to circle it back to the Devils, there's been plenty of instances in which Jake Allen carried the team on his back. And I was present for one of those performances when the Devils were in Sin City taking on the Golden Knights. That should have been a blowout game in favor of Vegas. But who was making those crucial saves at the right possible time? It was Jake Allen. And I even put out on social media that if the Devils, by some miracle, made it to the playoffs, Jake Allen is my MVP. But there have been so many examples in which Jake Allen has a good performance, but the team in front of him just wasn't all that good. Or I think Capo Kakinen, he was one of the top players in the NHL when it came to high danger chances. And I I think also making high danger saves when a reporter brought it to his attention during exit interviews, if my memory serves me well, regardless, that's another example in which you have a decent goalie, but not a good constructed roster. And as a result, their good outings go to waste. I think that's the point that Chico was also trying to make that it's not just one area. It's a collective team thing. And speaking of Stanley Cup final, I will tell you guys who I'm rooting for in the Stanley Cup final. But before we continue, let me tell you guys about FanDuel. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL. And FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to, to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book, and I'm going to tell you who I'm picking momentarily, but please remember to gamble responsibly. All right. It all comes down to this. The Stanley Cup final. Connor McDavid and Matthew Kachuk, two of the best players in this generation, going toe-to-toe. And let me just say, the the traveling is going to be intense. Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, all the way down south in the States. Woof, that's, the, the hopefully the players uh, don't get too fatigued. I think the Florida Panthers, given how they played against the Rangers, they're going to be a tough out. And the Oilers, they're going to have to stick to what they did, especially in the first round against the Kings, which is, You're going to have to play collective team hockey, and you're going to have to get everyone involved, similar to what happened with Dylan Holloway that series. And Stuart Skinner, uh, I mean, he stepped up his game. I'll give him that. And it's just amazing that the Oilers clinched the game on 10 shots on goal. All right, Adam Henrique, he's obviously on the Oilers. I wouldn't mind seeing him hoist up the trophy. Connor McDavid, I feel like, All-time great players deserve one championship underneath their belt. Back then, people were talking about 
Tom Brady. Now they're talking about Patrick Mahomes. Back then, people were talking about the second greatest basketball player to ever play in the NBA, Michael Jordan. And now people are talking about the greatest player to ever play basketball, LeBron James. It, it's just a generational type thing. And, and now McDavid plays with the same organization that Wayne Gretzky played for and made famous. All right. I, like I said, they do deserve one Stanley Cup. And I feel like they're going to get it, but not this year. I, I have way more faith in the Florida Panthers and what Sergei Bobrovsky brings in between the pipes. I, I don't know. I just, I just have a feeling about this Panthers team. And they've already been to the Stanley Cup final. They know what it takes to win. And, yes, they got smoked by the Vegas Golden Knights. But this Oilers team, let's face it, there were times where we were worried about them. And, and how much further they would go. In fact, people were projecting that the Stars would make it to the Stanley Cup final. This Oilers team is very scrappy when it comes to offense. I just mentioned McDavid, but you also have to factor in Drysaddle, Nugent Hopkins, Bouchard, and also their leading goal getter in Zach Hyman. Remember when somebody was saying that Zach Hyman was only in the NHL or he was only successful because his parents were rich. I bet that idiot out in Montreal feels like a complete donkey. And if the Oilers end up do pulling away with the Stanley Cup, I, I can't wait to see the type of reception he'll get on social media. But digressing a little bit, the Oilers are a dynamic offensive unit. However, on the other side of things, the Panthers, you can't count them out either. Also a very scrappy team. Good offensively, they know how to get those tough goals, but they're also great defensively, and they got scrappy goaltending. This goes back to what I said in segment two. Sometimes it's not about thriving in one particular category. It's thriving in a whole array of categories that makes a successful team. I, I think this Panthers team is going to be very hard to beat, if I'm being completely honest, and based on how they played against the Rangers despite – facing uh, Igor Shosturkin. Now you get to face Stuart Skinner, who is a clear downgrade. Let's just be honest. Matthew Kachuk, he's the cousin of Tom Fitzgerald. And it's also pretty cool that Matthew Kachuk and Jason Tatum, who currently plays for the Boston Celtics, both of them are competing in a championship for their respective sports. Very small world. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the Florida Panthers, and I think they're going to beat the Oilers in six. That is my prediction. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. Who are you picking to hoist up the cup in 2024? And what are your thoughts on the Devils and their goaltending situation going into the offseason? I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts. Leave a comment down below if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening on a podcast streaming service, hit me up on my personal X page app at TreyMat4 or the show's X page app at Locked On Devils. As for this episode, that's all the time I have for you. Continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys next episode. Thanks for listening once again.